Eagle proud symbol of our country Keep on flying high up above And together we will stand And we'll restore the land Oh Eagle Keep on flying Eagle Welcome in to Listen to the Eagle Your live calling radio show Hunting, fishing, God, family, country and anything Paul Ott wants to talk about. I'm Burdock Carruth coming to you live from the Reeds Metal Studio right here at the beautiful Farm Bureau building in Jackson, Mississippi. Alongside Paul Ott down at beautiful Lake Dixie Springs in the Scenic Rivers region. we got Mr. Michael Guest that's running for U.S. Congress. Michael, welcome to Listen to the Eagle. Well, thank you all for letting me come on this evening. Absolutely. Michael, I know it's... Uh, Y'all are getting after it out there. How is the energy, and how is the campaign going? You know, everything is going great. Uh, we've been running hard uh, since Congressman Harper uh, made his announcement uh, early January that he was not going to seek a, another term. Uh, we uh, decided very quickly that this was something that uh, – we wanted to do is something that I actually had been thinking about for some period of time, uh, that if Greg uh, ever left the House, uh, that I would want to pursue. Uh, so I've talked to my family about that. Uh, we prayed about it and felt that that was the direction that God was leading us. And so uh, once Greg formally decided not to run again, uh, we qualified shortly thereafter, uh, and we've been running ever since. So we've been getting out in the district uh, we've been going out into these different communities, uh, meeting people, uh, listening to the needs of the people throughout the district. Uh, as we've been out, uh, we've gotten a warm reception, uh, and we've really gotten a great feedback from the people uh, across the 3rd Congressional District. Michael, I know it's, a, uh, it's, it's kind of a call of passion, and, and it sounds like you've always kind of wanted this, and I know timing's everything, but... You know, there, there's a sacrifice, and, and I share this with our listeners because, yeah, we want to know more about you, but, but you're also at a stage of life. I mean, you're fixing to pack up and go and represent this great state. It's a, it, it's, it's a commitment. You know, it, it is. I mean, it's, it's not something that uh, we entered into lightly uh, because if we are fortunate enough uh, to be elected, uh, I understand that uh, there will be a lot of travel involved. Uh, I do not intend to move my family to D.C. if I'm fortunate enough to get elected. So sure. uh, I'll be traveling back and forth. Uh, I'll be leaving my family back here in Mississippi uh, because, you know, Mississippi's my home. Uh, this is where I grew up. Uh, this is where I've gone to school, both uh, high school, uh, attended college here, uh, and then after uh, getting out of college, this is where I've spent the last 23 years of my life uh, prosecuting criminals on behalf of the people of the state of Mississippi to try to make our community safe. Right. Uh, and this is where my family is. This is where my church family is. And so Mississippi will always be my home. Uh, and so if I'm fortunate enough to be elected, uh, D.C. will be where I will go to work, uh, and then uh, whenever uh, Congress is not in session, uh, I'll be returning home because I think it's important for our elected leaders uh, to be responsible and held accountable to the people that send them to serve. Yes, and sir. I don't believe that uh, someone who is in D.C. and is not coming home and spending time in the district I don't believe you can be receptive to the needs of the people. Uh, and so if I'm fortunate enough uh, to uh, win this uh, election, uh, I will be returning home, and we will continuing, be continuing to get out into the district uh, to see what we can do to better serve the people because the job is not, is not about you as an individual. It's about what you can do to serve the people that put you in that position. Right. Michael, our core audience, we're a, we're a God, family, and country show. And, of course, our listeners love God, love family, and love our country. How does that fit with you and your views and your campaign? You know, uh, you know uh, I, I would agree with your core values. I think you've got to, it's got to be God, family, country, uh, and in that order. Uh, and, you know, I was blessed to grow up in a Christian home. Uh, where my parents uh, made sure that I was in church on a regular basis. Uh, and so then as I came into adulthood, uh, it became important for me 
uh, to have my family in church. Uh, and our, my relationship with my Heavenly Father uh, is something that, uh, that, that I'm proud of. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that I attend church. Uh, that I serve my church family by teaching Sunday school, uh, by serving on the deacon board. Uh, and so th- those are things that are very important. And I think as you're looking as to whom you want to see in these positions, uh, I think a person's moral, uh, ethical background is something that's very important. Yes, uh, and I also believe that those are the type of people that we want to see go to Washington, D.C. to represent us. We want to send people who believe in traditional family values. We want to see people who will stand up for the values of the people of Mississippi. Uh, and what I hope is that through this election process, through this campaign, uh, that people will see that I have the values that they're looking for, for when they want to send somebody to Washington, D.C. to represent the people of the state of Mississippi. Yep. Well, and, and you segued right into my next question. we got about two and a half minutes here. And if you're available, I'd love for you to hang on another segment, but you may have another event. But real quick, speaking of that, everything you've said, and and now we know what you're about, but how do you go to Washington and help change Washington and not let Washington change you? Because we see that so much now. Yeah, and, you know, I I think a lot of it that if you are secure uh, in your faith, if you have a relationship with your Heavenly Father, uh, if you have family support, uh, that you have that core support group, you know, I think you can go to Washington, D.C., and you can stand on those values. Well, Michael, again, thank you for doing this. Thank you for wanting to represent this great state of Mississippi. And we've got about a minute and 30 seconds left where we go to a hard break, and I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you address the state of Mississippi. Well, uh, again, I can't thank you enough for just giving me a few minutes um, to, uh, to be on your show. Uh, I have had the honor and privilege uh, for the last 23 years to serve the people of Madison and Rankin County uh, as their district attorney. Uh, and during that time, we've worked with our local law enforcement, our judicial officials, uh, to see that our communities are great places to live and to uh, And what I hope that I can do is take that experience from fighting in the courtroom for the people of Mississippi to Washington, D.C., to fight in the halls of Congress, again, to see that our values are represented and that Mississippi is put first uh, in Washington. Michael Guest for U.S. Congress. Michael, thank you again for for everything you're doing for the state, and thank you for being a part of the show, brother. Yes, sir. Y'all have a great evening. Thank you very much. Don't go away. we got more of Listen to the Eagle. Welcome back to Listen to the Eagle, uh, right here in Reed's Metal Studio in the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation building. Bert, yeah, it looks like a hell hunter out there. <laughs> hey, Craig, we we appreciate you being on Listen to the Eagle. We saw some video that you had online of of some things y'all are doing out there in Texas. It looked unbelievable and awesome, and and want to thank you for being on with us. We've got a hog problem in Mississippi, and we want you to kind of share what y'all been doing. Having looks like having fun. But also share with us, are you actually taking care of the problem in Texas? I'm a landowner myself. I uh, bought my place back in 2000. And I fought the pigs for years. And, and uh, there was a state program through the state of Texas where they would substitute us and we could hire them to come and fly the helicopters. Really is where I saw how effective the helicopters could be. The problem was with what they were doing was they weren't, uh, hitting hitting it enough. They would come in and fly one or two days a year in our area and, you know, kill 100 or 200 hogs, and we were ecstatic about that, but it wasn't putting enough of a dent in the population. Uh, as you all probably know, you have to kill seven, out of, uh, seven or eight out of ten just to maintain the population. So we kind of took what they were doing, and I got a bunch of my neighbors together back then for somebody to hire us for us to take them up. Uh, I actually did a lot of the gunning myself, uh, and we, we used our employees to do the shooting. And we just uh, – the farmers would pay us so many dollars an acre, or so, and we uh, we just flew till we ran out of money. And we really saw how effective the, the aerial pro- program can be. Wow. So, so y'all actually took it upon yourself to help this, and then it became a business where actual farm or landowners would hire you – 
to uh, to fly up in helicopters and help maintain or, or to get rid of hogs. Yeah, absolutely. And we did that for a couple of years. Uh, in 2011, Texas passed uh, what they called the pork chopper bill, believe it or not. <laughs> and that's what, well, that's what allowed people to come and pay us to enjoy the experience of shooting something out of a helicopter. Uh, we have millions of pigs running around in Texas, and people want to want to. We basically took the financial responsibility off the landowner, placed it on the shoulders of the willing, which are sportsmen that want to enjoy the experience. And it's a win-win situation uh, for everybody. Once we started doing that, we could do more flying. We could sign people's land up for free. Uh, the gunners come in, they're happy. We're happy. The landowners are happy. Uh, it's been really effective. We killed uh, nearly 4,700 pigs in eight weeks. Uh, this last season, oh, and uh, it's, uh, it, it makes a significant difference. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you we're going to get rid of them. We're not. Uh, I compare it to like a sponge. If you squeeze a sponge, all the water out of a sponge, and you lay it back on the surface of the water, it's going to soak back up again, and the same way with the pigs. But we, we only fly about eight weeks out of the year uh, with our program. Is that an assault rifle there? you shooting a uh, gray? No, sir. Uh, we are one of the only companies that uh, primarily uses shotguns. Well, solely uses shotguns, I'll say. Um, we use a TAC-12A1, which is a gun we helped develop uh, over the course of three years. It's made uh, in uh, Mountain Air, New Mexico by Firebird Precision, and it's a conversion of the MKA-1919. So it is a, it's a, uh, an AR-style 12-gauge actual magazine. Craig, kind of to help me understand so say paul Ott and i came out there and we wanted to go up what what kind of expense are we looking at as shooters or hunters uh in your operation you know it's for a full day hunt with our company it's fifteen thousand a day and that's six to eight people so you're looking at about two to twenty five hundred dollars a person uh we'll, we leave uh the reason we do a full day is sometimes we might cover 40 50 60 miles Right. And so we load up everybody in the chase truck. You know, we're all on the radios, and we take off after hogs and don't come back till that evening. And we just stop about every hour, more shells, more fuel, change out the shooters, and go again. And the best way to do it is go to helihunter.com, and uh, you can shoot us an email. Uh, there's a phone number on there. Um, and just get a hold of us. I, I will say don't wait. Uh, it's a very popular thing to do. We, I think we have two days left for 2018. Hmm. Uh, a lot of our people come fly with us, they come back. It, <laughs> so you know, it, we're out there to erect pigs, but it is a good time. Uh, so talk, talk to me a little bit about the hogs that actually get harvested. Do, do we come back and get these? How, how does that work? What do y'all do with the, with the actual hogs that are taken from the hunt? We, uh, well... If the shooters want them, they can take all they all they want, but generally they'll shoot a lot more than they can eat. Uh, we do try to pick them up. Now, if we have wet weather, I'm not going to tear a guy's wheat field up worse than the pigs were trying to get them. Yeah. Uh, but if we shoot them in a, in a place that, where we have an opportunity to pick them up, uh, I do have people on my staff that pick them up. We field dress them. Uh, we freeze them. Uh, there's a company called Hogs for a Cause, an organization, I should say, that's a Christian organization. They donate their time, and they actually are the ones that process and distribute the meat. Um, so we say we're killing pigs for Jesus. Craig, I can't yeah. thank you enough for, for being a part of Listen to the Eagle and, and sharing this. If you don't mind, one last time, tell everybody the website, where to go, uh, if they want more information, and maybe even come get to, to do a hunt with you guys. You bet, man. And uh, thank, thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. And, Good luck with it, man. Like I said, I'm a landowner, and that's how I got started in this. I've, I uh, full well see the damage that pigs do, especially flying in the air every year. Uh, I mean, we, you wouldn't believe the devastation. I, or I guess you would, but uh, just uh, keep fighting them, man. And, uh, yeah, I'm with Heli Hunter. That's, uh, you can reach us at helihunter.com. And thank you all for having me on. Good luck, boys. Man, thank you so much. Appreciate it. It looks fun. Don't go away. We got more of Listen to the Eagle. Welcome back in. Listen to the Eagle. Your live calling radio show, hunting, fishing, God, family, country, and anything Paul Ott wants to talk about. I'm Burdock Caruth, your host, coming to you live from the Reeds Metal Studio right here at the beautiful Farm Bureau building. 
alongside Paula, the legend, down at beautiful Lake Dixie Springs in the scenic Rivers region. Paula, we're going old school for the next segment. We got Woody Kane and Robert Daly in the house. Uh, Craig yeah. Meyer, he does the helicopter hunting out in Texas. Don't y'all think we need that in the state of Mississippi? It sounds like a lot of fun. It, it would be good, but it, it will not work here. Because cause our forests are so dense. Right. Yeah. And then the same way, for instance, right now, we're doing some work for some people, uh, some hog work for people. Uh, you know, we're, he's wanting them off his place. We're trapping them off his place. People cross the fence think they're the neatest thing since sliced bread. They don't want us to shoot them. They don't want us to trap them. Right, yep. So, I mean, you know, you up there in the helicopter, you run the hogs over on this guy's place, you got to stop shooting, you know. So it it, it would work if everybody was in agreement. But, you know, if if they're not, then really, I hate to say it, you're, you're chasing them from one place to the other. Right. And, Woody, we had the biologist on not long ago, and, and he shared that right now uh, they've still not come out with the correct – uh, poison, uh, but they said they are working on it, but that the best way to get rid of hogs is what you do, the trapping. The, Bert, you know, I really ain't, I ain't fond of the poison. The only way to poison the hog is with lead. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, A lot of it. Yeah, well, it don't take but one. Well, but, uh, depends on how I, big the hog is or where you shoot it. Uh, just where you shoot him, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not for the poisoning of them, but uh, you know, I mean, there, we got to do something with them. These things are, they're, they're past dealing with now. I mean, you know, it's to the point where we can't hardly control them. In oh, places. it's bad. It's like it's cockroach. real bad. What, baby? We kill the end of January. Yeah, from the closing day of January last year to the end of February. We had, done, we had had over 100 that we had put our hands on, that wow. we had trapped and shot. In, in what kind of acreage? Uh, that's, that was pretty much off of one farm. Oh, my goodness. I think the biologist told me, if I get this correct, I think he said you have to, you have to kill 75% of the herd. Just to maintain balance. Just to maintain they balance. Multiply so fast. Yeah. Because they multiply so fast. When pigs are 13 weeks old, they're sexually mature and can breed. Yes. Hmm. A sow can have three litters a year. And by the time, by the time she's on her, uh, what maybe second litter, Woody, she, the, her her first pigs are already ready to breed. Yes. Is that about right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. So what's the answer? You say you don't like the poison. You can't do it by helicopter like they're doing in Texas. You can't keep you can't cover enough ground. There's not enough guys like you out there. What's the answer? Put a bounty on them. Oh. Yeah. Man, yeah, like you, you put a five dollar bounty on a pigtail. Man, you know how many people yeah. start shooting hogs? I like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just like back when they used to have a bounty on beavers, man, there were people out there trying to kill beavers every chance they got. It was like $5 every time you took a, a beaver's tail and turned it in. And so, yeah, I think I think that would uh, be a, a big plus for that. Um, it's a shame that you can't sell the meat. Of course, you know, that's, that'll never happen because right. you, you have to get it inspected and all that. But uh, if it were possible to do that legally, then uh, you'd have everybody out there want to kill hogs. And, Woody, you and I were talking in the break. It's it's hard to put it into words. There, there's no way to put how bad this really is into words, is it? No, no. Uh, Bert, I was, during first deer season this year, we replanted Bucatana, what, four times? We replanted about about 400 acres of food plots four times. Golly. That's a lot of money. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, these guys would tell me, plant it. Well, I'd go to co-op and charge a seed and all. You know what I mean? I was working for them, charge a seed and all, plant it. Yeah. You get a rain on it, it come up, and it looked like you took the disc and went through there and just turned it under. I mean, yeah. so it would look so bad, and they tear it up. We dissed it up. We plant it again. And it did the same thing. Finally, they just said, look, you, you know, whatever you need, you do it. Just just get them out of here. And I told them, I said, the only way you can do it, I said, I cannot. Once you start, you got to roll. You got to do it day and night. Love you both. Miss you both. Hope y'all are great and, and have a great week. And we'll see y'all soon. Well, do it. Good. Enjoy Good. being there tonight, Bert. Paul Light, I've had a fun night tonight. I, I want to tell our listeners, we're going to close the show. You know, Paul Light, the last three weeks, we've really been talking about our Second Amendment and what to do. And, and it's been a big deal uh, with our president and, and Congress and, and the Senate and all these people protesting and the kids standing up down in Florida really wanting some action taken. But I want to take a song that that you wrote with Greg Harvison years ago, and it just kind of puts it all in perspective in a really cool way, and that's the way I want to close the show tonight. I love you, Paul, and I'm going to see you in a little bit. Y'all, please, just listen to every word of this song. Many times I have stood in defense of this great land. Whenever aggressors rise, you'll find me close at hand. I've been called around the world that all men might be free. I march behind old glory. I fight for liberty. And I was there with Washington in Valley Forge's bloody snow. Ragged but determined men we overcame the foe. I was called the volunteer, this time in New Orleans. We denied the crown. We had no need for earthly kings. When Travis called, I answered. The Alamo was lost, but I returned with Houston, and we showed them who was boss. When brothers from the North and South began their bitter fray, I could not choose a side. So I was blue and I was gray. Then again the challenge came, a challenge deeply felt. And I went down to San Juan Hill with Teddy Roosevelt. Then in 1917, I went over there to face the Kaiser's armies. And I whipped them. Fair and square. I went again in 42, before all Europe fell, to Hitler's rage and tyranny, in a war they all called hell. And I was there in the Philippines, by the side of General Mack. When the rising sun flew o'er our land, I fought and won it back. I have been on Pork Chop Hill and in the jungles of Vietnam. Wherever I am needed, that is where I am. Then in just 43 days, I calmed the desert storm. I followed the battle plan of General Schwarzkopf to the Kuwaiti's open arm. I'm the right arm of America. I am the Army Air. Force, Navy, and Marines, America's finest daughters and sons. I'm sometimes called the National Guard. I'm how the peace was won. Green Berets, the 24th, Top Gun, the SEALs, paratroopers, and the Flying Tigers, too. Many are the uniforms I've worn, and these are just a few. On the battlefield and at home, I'm your security. Tools of peace from Freedom's Forge. I'm what keeps you free. Now there are those who say I'm evil. They condemn me and they damn. But they are free to say the things they say because of who I am. 
Across this hallowed land of freedom Where old glory flies so free I am the brave men and women Of America's armed forces In pursuit of liberty 